I'm here with Dr. Bruce McLucas, who is the founder of the Fibroid Treatment Collective here in Beverly Hills. And we're here today to talk about a number of things. There's been a, a lot of news recently about uh, something called a power morselator and, and how that can affect people who are being treated for fibroids and uterine tumors. I mean, there's a, a lot of confusion between fibroid tumors and cancerous uterine tumors. A lot of women are confused and a lot of women are dealing with these issues. And I know, Dr. McLucas, you have answers about a lot of them. The fibroids are benign. I mean, they cause some terrible symptoms, but fibroids are benign gross. They are not cancerous. And this is, uh, they are the cause of, I'd say, half a million hysterectomies, removing the uterus, and myomectomies, leaving the uterus and cutting out the, uh, cutting out the fibroids every year. So that's a half million surgeries being done for fibroids, and they're almost always benign. Now, in one-tenth of one percent of women, there is a confusion. You start thinking you're going to be dealing with that benign tumor, and it turns out that it's a sarcoma, it's a cancer. The problem, Pat, is that we have no specific test that can tell us before we start to do a surgery, and that we'll get to this later in the interview. But there's no specific x-ray, there's no ultrasound, there's no pelvic MRI, there's no CT scan that can say, this is a cancer, this is a benign tumor. And that was part of the problem with the, the, the morselator. So exactly what is a power morselator? As the name implies, Pat, it, it's an instrument that uses power to, uh, out of a very small incision, take big bits of tissue. And it does it by uh, having a spinning blade that will cut up the tissue. So it cuts yeah. it into morsels. Yeah, it, it morselates it, yeah, exactly. It makes morsels out of it. But in that rare case, in that rare case where that tumor that you thought was benign is a cancer, the worry is that the morselator might spread the disease and, and give you less of a survival rate afterwards. So once you find out that you do have fibroids, uh, there, there's, then comes the question of what to do about it and what some of your treatment choices are. And I know there are a number of them. I know that you've been really involved in uh, fibroid embolization. Well, compared to the worry of the morselator, and we'll talk a little bit more about the morselator soon, uh, fibroid embolization does not cut up any tissue. It basically sh starves the fibroids by blocking the blood supply. So do they shrink up and, and They shrink. Disappear? One of my patients said very well, it's like going from a, uh, a grape to a raisin. And compared to myomectomies where you take out the fibroids, the fibroids after embolization never come back. So if you're a young woman, uh, 25, and you've got fibroids, uh, you have a myomectomy, it's not a good bet to say that that's going to be your only fibroid surgery. They will come back. That happened with my sister. I mean, she go. had to have two procedures done. Yeah. And with a number of women that I've known that, you know, you don't deal with it once, this could return. Yeah. But after embolization, there's no recurrence. And the morselator is not used in, in embolization. Uh, fibroid embolization, no scalpels, no stitches, uh, no morselator for sure. Uh, we don't cut up the uterus, we basically starve the fibroids and it causes them to shrink and I tell all my patients, you'll feel like you uh, did maybe five years ago. That'll be enough to stop your symptoms. Well, that's, that's very good news and no morselators involved so we don't have to deal with that either with fibroid embolization. No scalpels, no uh, sutures, no morselators. Yeah. Well, we'll continue this discussion. Thank you so much for watching. <laughs>